It's a bit of an urban legend in mathematics. There's a sort of a romance to the story in a way. I'm Allison Partial. You're listening to Science Quickly. Today, we've got an episode about a mysterious figure in the online math world. They disappeared years ago, but they're still sparking debate and speculation. We all love a good puzzle. Some people have their crosswords. Some people play Sudoku. Other people are still doing Wordle. But Ron Gordon, a patent agent and a former physicist in Massachusetts, does hardcore calculus. Back in 2013, when our story takes place, he spent enough time on this online forum called Math Stack Exchange that it could have qualified as a full-time job. I was working my full-time job, and then I was, I was on Stack Exchange. Plus, I had a family, too. I, I was having so much fun with it that I, I, I just didn't even keep track of how many hours I was dedicating to it. The Mathematics Stack Exchange website is like Yahoo Answers, if the people on Yahoo Answers had graduate-level STEM degrees. Now, Ron Gordon has solved 2,954 math problems in his decade on Stack Exchange, but he's most famous for his answer to one integral in particular. On November 11th, 2013, a Stack Exchange user asked a question. I need help with this integral. The integral from negative 1 to 1 of 1 over x times the square root of 1 plus x over 1 minus x times the natural log of 2x squared plus 2x plus 1, all divided by 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 dx. Okay, that's a crazy integral. And there are so many parts to it that, you know, one thing changes, any one of these one things changes, and the answer is completely different, right? That's Jay Cummings. He's an associate professor of math at California State University, Sacramento. I've enlisted his help to figure out what the heck I'm looking at. As much as solving integrals has haunted my nightmares since Calc 2, the idea of an integral is actually pretty simple. Picture a line on a graph. Now imagine taking a colored pencil and shading in the area beneath that line down to the bottom axis of the graph. What we're trying to find is the area of this colored region. For a straight line, this is super easy, it's basic geometry. But the more complicated and curvy and weird your line gets, the more difficult it is to figure out the area underneath it. Now, the integral in the November 11th post, that was difficult. The line on the graph looks kind of like the spine of a long-necked dinosaur. The original poster tried using a few computer programs, but none of them could give what's called the closed form of the answer. That's a precise and concise solution. Five minutes after it was posted, someone commented, Do you have any reason to believe that there is a closed form of that horrid-looking thing? And that was a very good question because it would it would save everybody a lot of time if someone just this thing is impossible. Forget it. This there's there's no way. Then, four and a half hours after the original post, there's an answer. I equals four pi times the arc cotangent of the square root of the golden ratio. The answer came from a user named Cleo. It was a new account with only one previous answer. Cleo provided no notes, no proof, no explanation just a single hyperlink over the symbol for the golden ratio, which takes you to a definition of the golden ratio. Oof. Which is such a ridiculous answer. It's like you get this sense of, am I dealing with a supercomputer here? A theorem prover that has not been released yet? Did chat GPT start back in 2012 with integral solving? The Stack Exchange community, which always showed their work, erupted in arguments in the comments section. Here's one. I defer to Hamming. Quote, the purpose of computing is insight, not numbers. Unless the result itself is particularly illuminating, I do not agree that it is an answer. That last comment came from Ron Gordon, the patent agent and former physicist, who didn't see a whole lot of value in Cleo's bare bones answer. I think at the end of the day, the value of a website like Stack Exchange um, lies in what knowledge it can impart to people. And I think just the bare answer to the question by itself doesn't have that much value. But it affected my determination to come up with a final solution, for sure. And I spent the better part of a weekend doing it, writing it up. It took me about half a legal pad to work through it. It turns out Cleo had been right. Ron posted the full answer, which immediately started collecting upvotes from community members. A lot of them were in awe of the techniques he'd used to solve the problem. It was eventually posted to the subreddit r slash math under the title Master of Integration. It's insane. This is this is this one thing I did 10 years ago. I think I have better answers in, in the Stack Exchange world than that one, believe it or not. But yeah, Clio also, you know, I think hit, hits a nerve too, obviously. 
Clio's drive-by answer had unleashed madness on MathStack Exchange. Between 2013 and 2015, she'd go on to do this 37 more times, often popping in unreasonably quickly to solve incredibly complex integration problems with fully formed answers. She did not show even an iota of her work, then she'd disappear again into the ether. Experts really are divided about Clio. You know, it's, it's clearly someone who has a real mastery of integration techniques. Like she mentions these strange functions like I've never heard of. That's Anthony Bonato. He's a mathematician at Toronto Metropolitan University. Uh, some people have speculated that maybe Clio is Stephen Hawking or was Stephen Hawking or, um, you know, the late Miriam Merzakani, the Fields medalist. Food for thought, I guess. Or is this, I don't know, Terence Tao, you know, uh, just relaxing in the evening. For the record... Terence Tao, sometimes described as one of the greatest living mathematicians, confirmed via email that he is not, in fact, Cleo. Or is this a Ramanujan? Is Cleo another math genius from southern India who's, uh, uh, <laughs> who just is doing this in their spare time? That genius he's talking about, that's Srinivaja Ramanujan, one of the most enigmatic figures in mathematics history. You might have heard of him. Dev Patel played him in a 2016 biopic called The Man Who Knew Infinity. We need proofs of your work. But they are right, sir. I hadn't completed that proof. How do you know? I just do. He was born in Tamil Nadu in 1887, but he comes up a lot when you talk about Clio. He had this intuitive feel for math um, that was quite, uh, frankly, awe-inspiring. Uh, he had no uh, advanced math education, uh, and yet somehow he came up with these incredible theorems. They seem to have struck the same nerve a hundred some years apart. Because he didn't have impl- because he didn't include proofs. And and that was sort of Ramanujan's gift and curse. I mean, he was so so talented, but he was never put into the educational box that says, here is how you prove things. And you know, this is the path to take in order to do mathematics. But I think a lot of a lot of people who just hated being told, show your work, show your work, show your work. Uh, here's someone flaunting, uh, not showing their work, and people are cheering behind that. But for Ron, and for so many on Math Stack Exchange, all of the fun of their shared hobby is in showing your work. It's not a dry explanation. It's an adventure. Take Ron's answer to that infamous 2013 integral. And by the time I got to where I wanted it, it had like an eighth-degree polynomial in, in, in the denominator, which under normal circumstances would mean, no, you're not going to be able to do this. But it turned out that the polynomial had a lot of symmetry. And I could then exploit that symmetry to deduce all of the roots. I was able to reduce what I had to find from an eighth degree polynomial to a quadratic. And from the quadratic, the golden ratio fell out. It turned out that Ron's methods for solving the problem were compelling to a lot of people. His answer has earned almost a thousand upvotes and is still shared around today. Did you ever watch a Big Bang Theory? There's a scene where Sheldon um, Sheldon has this big formula on on, a, on his whiteboard, and he goes, "Look at it! I feel like I just made a baby." And 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 I have to say, I, when I said that, I laughed so hard because there's a lot of truth in that. When you come up with something four pi r cotangent square root of phi, and you've derived it, you you, you do feel like you created something. And Cleo created something, too, in her own way. But who she was, why she did it, nobody seems to know. Do you have any personal thoughts on who Cleo is, what she does, why she does what she does? Absolutely not. I have no idea. I have no idea who Cleo is. Uh, in fact, I mean, a lot of the people that I, I corresponded with and, um, and, and, and interacted with on the site, I, I, I know very little. I know very little of. Recently, speculation has sparked back up again thanks to a viral TikTok video about Clio. Since then, a user on Twitter has claimed to be Clio, but hasn't offered any proof. And while some people are buying it, a lot of people aren't. Whoever Clio was, it seems that she was just very, very good at math. Though some, like Bonato, suspect a computer might have been involved at some point. Still, that doesn't mean she was a bot either. Computing ability for this kind of integration is still limited and would have been even more limited in 2013. Given that the software couldn't do these intervals, I doubt it. I'd be real curious (laughs) to find out what she's got her hands on. Clio's profile itself, which hasn't been updated in seven years, tragically does not provide any clues. 
Today, her bio reads, My real name is Cleo. I'm female. I have a medical condition that makes it very difficult for me to engage in conversations or post long answers. Sorry for that. I like math and do my best to be useful at this site, although I realize my answers might be not useful for everyone. But, but, I did wonder, has it always been her bio? I thought I'd double check, so I went on the internet archive, pasted in her URL, clicked on a snapshot that was taken in 2013, because remember kids, nothing on the internet is ever truly gone, and her bio was different back then. And guess who she quotes? While asleep, I had an unusual experience. There was a red screen formed by flowing blood, as it were. I was observing it. Suddenly, a hand began to write on the screen. I became all attention. That hand wrote a number of elliptic integrals. They stuck to my mind. As soon as I woke up, I committed them to writing. Srinivasa Ramanujan. Then, Cleo wrote, Remember, you are not locked into a single axiom system. You may invent your own, whenever you wish. Just use your intuition and imagination. Science Quickly is produced by Jeff Delvisio, Taliga Bowes, Kelso Harper, and Corinne Leong. Our theme music was composed by Dominic Smith. Don't forget to subscribe to Science Quickly wherever you get your podcasts. For more in-depth science news and features, go to scientificamerican.com. And if you like the show, give us a rating and review. For Scientific American Science Quickly, I'm Allison Partial.